Hi everyone, thanks for joining me here today, Dally Society. My name's Kristen, if we haven't met before. And as promised, I have a sewing gadget episode. My favorite tools that I use, bits and pieces that I've picked up over the years. Stay tuned and let's have a talk. And also a lot of these other people have told me about too, so I'm not gonna take full credit for it. These are things that I've seen shared on many different sewing channels and things that I wish I had bought at the start of my sewing journey. A lot of these things are really inexpensive too. I've been working on plenty of new makes, one of which is in the background there. I've got Meg here to also keep you entertained. <laughs> it's really cold and windy outside, it's freezing. I think it was like nine degrees Celsius here this morning. And of course, if any of you know how chilly it does get in Melbourne, the wind is so blustery and that sort of chills you to the bone. It's that horrible cold wind. So I've brought you inside. The garden is not a place you want to be today. Now let's get started on some fantastic little tools, bits and pieces that have helped me. Firstly, I want to thank Alex Judge because she has let me know about some fantastic um, loop turners. Now, if you're like me and you've tried every different loop turner under the sun and you still have had trouble, uh, look, I've tried every method there is. I've tried the overlocking method that you pull the strings back through. I didn't have much luck with that. I've also tried things like chopsticks, which can work fine sometimes. Other times you can end up poking and damaging um, your fabric, poking holes. I've tried these other little loop turner that sort of catch on the plastic they're really flexible and bendy haven't had a great deal of luck with them uh, but i've found after watching alex's channel these fantastic prim loop turners now the great thing about these these will all be linked underneath as well if you're interested i'm going to link some shops in australia that i've purchased these from i'm also going to link uh, amazon affiliate links there as well i will leave it up to you guys wherever you want to purchase from uh, yeah, whatever suits you. These are fantastic. You get like a sleeve and you'll poke your fabric through, put it over the top and basically turn it inside out. And the only thing that I've done differently is that I've closed it up at one end. So even if you're going to keep your tube open at both ends, you have to close it up at one end. And then all you do is you take the straw-like plastic thing, the one that's open in the middle and you pop it inside your tube of fabric which can of course be ridiculously long and then you take the other one and you can either poke it in so that the fabric pushes inside that tube and comes out the other side I don't find that to be as effective against the tube and then it slides down Remove tube and voila, that's it. Dead easy and lock now, quicker. And they have just really changed my life. As far as narrow loop turning, I find that I just get so frustrated sometimes. And I know a lot of people find it difficult. You might may have issues with your fingers. You may have arthritis or um, different uh, issues with using your hands. And things like loop turning uh, is, can be really, really quite difficult. So if you can find a little tool, an inexpensive tool like this, uh, I think they're fantastic. So of course, I've just used one so far, but this is the packet. You'll get three different sizes. And the, yeah, these are the prim ones. I'm not sure if they make them in any other uh, variety. But look, chopsticks are great. Um, I've, yeah, I've used chopsticks for things like point turning at corners and things like that. Um, I find these ones pretty well useless. Um, yeah, I think, look, it's just a matter of trial and error and seeing what works for you. But these are a game changer. If you can get yourself a set of these, by all means, do it because you will uh, you'll find them fantastic to use. Another great little tool that I've had oh, for four or five years now is a little seam gauge. Now, this is a Merchant Mills one. Basically, your little seam gauge, you can just put your little red arrow on wherever you want it. There's also there's metric or imperial there, which is great. Uh, but I find those are fantastic to use for doing things like hems and uh, just measuring your seam allowances and things like that. So love my little Merchant and Mills seam gauge. That's a great little one. I and mean, there's a lot of different one varieties you can get in those as well, but they really do help. Um, and just have a little caddy sitting next to your 
sewing machine there that you can pop little gadgets and things in because it really does make all the difference when you're sewing and you have these things readily available. I find tweezers are fantastic as well. If you can get yourself a set of all different types of tweezers, long and short, different different sort of heads on them to grip and tweeze things for especially for your surgery or over locker um, but even for picking through um, cotton if you're wanting a bobbin on there's a lot of different uses for a good set of tweezers so I would highly recommend getting yourself a set of all the different varieties and you will be amazed at the different things that you can find to use these tweezers for and if people pinch them from your sewing desk that's my pet hate. I always go searching through the house because I like them to be remain on the sewing desk ready to use whenever I need them. My next item that I absolutely love are these little wonder clips. Now they're not uh, they're not cheap. I know they are quite expensive to buy, but if you keep them, uh, you'll find that one box will do the trick. Um, look, they are wonderful. They really do hold grip hold of things um, and if you don't want to use pins and put holes in things they're a great alternative they're also great for using for things like vinyl or leather and bag making but also I love using these for using for knit sewing so uh, yeah they're really really handy they're great to have a couple of sets I think um, the brand of these the Clover Wonder Clips you can get uh, there's a couple of different brands now they're all different prices but as I say they're not cheap but they are well worth investing in You'll use them time and time again. Um, one of those things that I wish I had have got when I first started sewing. And I'd seen people use them and I'd always put it off because, you know, they were a bit pricier. Uh, and then you get to realise investing in great little sewing tools like this can make your job so much easier and much more enjoyable. Next thing I love using, having in the desk and the drawer, is dental floss. Now, not just for your teeth, this is great for using for uh, basting on a zigzag stitch and putting a long line of dental floss in for doing things like gathering. You'll just find you get that more stability and a bit more even gathered. They will just slide through. And we all know how much how annoying it is to do the two rows of base stitching together. Depending on your fabric, it'd be quite easy if you've got a good fabric to work with. But if you have a difficult fabric, dental floss is a great lifesaver for, as I said, do a long zigzag uh, stitch, basting stitch over the top of the dental floss. And yeah, it's a great thing to use for gathering up. These next items I love using. Firstly, this is a little buttonhole cutter. I love this because of course, if you're like me when you first start sewing, you're cutting those buttonholes. If you're using an unpicker, it's a bit dangerous and you will always think, oh, it'll be fine. I'll just quickly use it. And um, yeah, you might split through and make that buttonhole a lot bigger. And there is really no way of going back once you've opened that buttonhole up and you can stitch it and mend it and it really uh, will really alter the look of the garment. So try and use one of these if you can. They're fantastic. Very sharp little devices, but work a treat. I love using the tailors all, especially for if you're using a rolled hem foot and you're poking in that fabric, a thing like a tailors all is exactly that nice fine point that you need. It's also great for turning in point, like really fine points, mitered hems. Just be careful. It can be very, very sharp. You don't want to be poking holes through, but it's a great little handy device. And these are things I wish I had have got uh, at the start, very inexpensive, just really handy little things to have in your sewing stash. Next would be a glue stick. Now, glue sticks are brilliant. This is actually a sew line fabric glue pen. I think these are great when you're doing things like placing pockets. Uh, there's so many different uses for these. These ones have got um, little cartridges that you can buy, pop in separately. I've always got a couple of these floating around in my desk because uh, they're, they're great. They're really, really handy to have. And you'll be amazed at the amount of times that you'll reach for it. And just to help maybe base things on um, if you don't want to be stitching and you just want things to stay put. A fabric glue pen is really handy, especially for things like attaching motifs uh, and even things like, you know, lace at the front of, say, a top that you want to place on. And it's really easy to wash off as well as you sort of Put it in the wrong spot. It's not going to dry it so fast that you can't attach it somewhere else if you need to. It's what I love about it. So yeah, these are great little glue pens to have in the stash too. A good unpicker. Get yourself a big one because you will never lose them. I've always had those tiny ones that I've lost. They've gone missing. I've never lost this one today. And I know you can get even bigger ones with a nice big wooden handle that are fantastic to have as well. So go for the big unpicker if you can get hold of one. Um, they're great little gadgets to have. 
in the sewing toolbox. Talking about buttonholing, when you have got uh, some fray away or fray check that is great to put around your buttonholes to stop them splitting and coming apart. And that's another pet hate of mine when you've gone to the trouble to do a beautiful buttonhole and you're putting your button through in and out and it, over time wears that stitching out. So the fray away or fray check just helps stabilize the, the buttonholes. Yeah, and it's really, really nice to use, nice and easy with that little fine point tip as well. So that is great to have in the sewing kit too. These are great little bodkins to have when you're doing things like threading through elastic, um, through your uh, channel. That, that can be really, really handy to use as well. And you can sort of adjust that to how tight you want it. They're great to have in the stash. Also, snippers. Now, there are some good snippers and some bad snippers. These ones aren't great. I've got a pair, a little yellow pair of viscous ones that I love, but they're yeah, I couldn't find them this morning, but who knows where they are. So these ones are not my favorite. These are the Viva Infinite. I don't like the way they cut. You have to have them on the right angle. But the Fiskars snips are my favorites. But recently I have found, Mick, I've found these fantastic little Fiskars shears. Now, these are brilliant. If you can find yourself a set of these, you will use them for not just for snipping, but also for cutting and clipping curves. And you'll see they have got a slightly kind of curved blade they are fantastic so if you're cutting the um seam allowances and you want to do things like grading seam allowances things like a boil wool of course they will get through no worries at all so fantastic little shears to have for especially cutting your curves and clipping notches I love my Ginga scissors. I bought these about two years ago now. Um, my husband occasionally does sharpen them for me. These are fantastic scissors. And of course, I was always a scissors gal and now I love my rotary cutter. Uh, but I still love a good pair of scissors. They're great to have. I've tried a few different brands. I've heard good things about the Kai shears as well. Uh, but the Gingas are just a good old fashioned pair of snips that I love using. But the uh, rotary blade that I love, of course, is the Olga, and I love the endurance blade. So I um, especially love that you look like the little safety catch. Now, be careful. I've cut myself a couple of times, not from using them, but just from brushing past, and the tip of that blade is incredibly sharp. So they are very, very dangerous to, to, to use, to have. Uh, a lot of people will say it only takes that one time to roll over the, th the finger. Um, be very, very careful. So definitely must use your safety catch on those. But the endurance blade is so sharp. It's amazing. I would definitely um, pay that little bit extra to get the endurance blade. Uh, and I love the more ergonomic design. I've got the other old fashioned rotary cutter, but I love that ergonomic um, designed one the best. So I will replace my blade probably every three months uh, once it sort of gets over that you really find it dulls quite easily a lot of people sharpen them themselves uh, if you know what you're doing that's great and um, it can be a way of saving money of course but you do have to watch they are quite brittle if you go around that curve and you bend or flex it just that little bit too much they will snap quite easily so be aware of that but definitely love my rotary cutter and I love my mat I've got a big cutting mat on a pool table uh, that everyone complains about because, of course, it's such an effort to play a game of pool and there's sewing things all over it. But it's fantastic to have because the big cutting mat I bought, I think it's about 1, 1 by 2 metres. Uh, I'm not exactly sure of the measurements, but I bought mine from JK Trading here in Australia. It's fantastic. It's one of those um, kind of self-healing. It's got the measurements around it as well. I absolutely love it. I did have it couriered here and I uh, had great service. I'll link th that shop below if you're interested in buying one of those here in Australia. Otherwise, if you're anywhere else in the world, I know Amazon do, um, do ship them around, of course, to get them here in Australia from Amazon can be a bit more pricey from overseas. So, of course, uh, I like to support local Aussie businesses. So, yeah, JK Trading is where I bought mine and I love my cutting mat. I don't know how I ever live without it. I did spend a lot of the time on the floor of the carpet and it really does make the job so much easier when you can get some of the right equipment to help out your on your sewing journey. Now, I spoke about these last week. I bought these hot hammers, these clover hot hammers, and boy, oh boy, are they fantastic. I have not stopped using them. They do have the heat permeate through, which is great, uh, and it does have the uh, measurements on there. You can do yourself a little hem with all the uh, guide there in the corner, mitered hem corner. It's just a great way of making your sewing a lot more uh, 
a bit more perfect or if you're a bit of a perfectionist and you want to get things absolutely perfect, that can sometimes make all the difference, especially uh, when you're measuring accurately. Uh, yeah, definitely think about getting a hot hemmer as well. And my iron that I absolutely love, I got it on a spotlight sale last year. I got an Oliso Pro iron, which is one that sort of, we put your hand on it, it drops down, take your hand off, it releases and stays up. So you don't have to keep lifting it up and down like a regular iron. It did take a long time to get used to that, but I love that iron so much now. I really, really um, can highly recommend it. Uh, a lot of people say they said they went on to buy those irons and, and love them as well. So this is the Aliso Pro iron. You can see when you're using it, you have got it dropped. You take your hand off and it immediately lifts up. So that way you don't have to worry about lifting it up all the time. It does take a bit of getting used to. And I love using a tailor's hand as well. These are great to use, especially for using for doing darts, doing sleeve heads and things like that. So you can get two different sizes. You can get the more narrow one for the sleeve, but that size is great for a bit of everything, I think. Um, but yeah, they are quite pricey. So if you can wait till you get one on sale, that's the best time to do it. And I think it was around the Black Friday sales that I purchased mine and I got about $100 off it because I think they're normally about $250. So if you hang around for some sale time, you'll find those irons are fantastic to pick up uh, at much cheaper prices. I love my fabric markers. I've got one of these Hancock's Vanishing Pencils. Uh, which is just like a little purple texture and of course a really nice fine line and it vanish over time you can also get things um, this is just another brand of vanishing marker as well most uh, sewing stores will have some kind of vanishing marker i also love of course you can't always use the purple on other fabrics but these are uh, little chalk pens are great you can get them in white and blue they're fantastic if you prefer the chalk over the pen but they are a must have for things like drawing on your darts don't forget to another tip with drawing on darts is you can actually cut out your dart on your pattern piece. If you cut out that triangle piece, and remove it. It's a great way of drawing in the dart inside that dart piece. So that's another little tip I picked up uh, over time. And uh, yeah, just simple little things like that. I think unless you hear them from someone else, you don't always think of doing it yourself. So definitely that is great for using for marking darts. And recently I decided to get some different bobbin cases because now I have my vintage faff. They take a different bobbin to my old Janome. But these little bobbin cases are fantastic to have. And you can just sort of slowly fill them up with your coloured cotton there. But yeah, they fit most size bobbins. And they're great, just great size to pop and slide inside a drawer. And just makes things a bit more organised than just sort of shuffling and sorting through a big random drawer of bobbins. So I love those little bobbin cases. These ones are the Hemline brand. I'm pretty sure you can get other brands as well. I spoke about this Rajar cloth too last week. A good pressing cloth, if you've got a great iron as well, is a must-have because especially things like when you're doing fusible interfacing and you can end up ruining your iron and getting stickies all over it, uh, a good cloth is fantastic to use for delicate fabrics. This has only been used a couple of times, so you can see it's quite starchy and thick still, but over time it will soften up it. That really makes all the world of difference when you're trying to save yourself a good piece of fabric. So these have been chemi chemically treated. Uh, they're a newer heavy duty style cloth. Basically you put it stamp side up and you can spray a bit of a spray of water over the top with the iron or with a steam. Um, it's great for basically for any type of fabric. Uh, if you're as I say, if you're using a steam, you don't need to dampen it at all. But I love that pressing cloth and definitely worth investing in a good um ironing cloth pressing cloth even things like a silk or ganza are apparently really good to use as well in um in place of buying yourself one too this is a great little thing to have in the stash now i have the woven type and i have the knit type and this is just like fabric bond i've tried all different varieties this is just a cheapy variety i think i got from aldi but i've used this soft stretch one as well i've used just about every brand there is and they're great if you're wanting to stabilize a hem and you're wanting to sort of pre-press it and get that really nice stability so it doesn't roll up if you're using a really thin kind of knit fabric and it rolls up that can be quite annoying so this will give it that stability if you're using a fabric that you want uh, as i say a woven fabric that you want to get a nice crisp hem definitely think about using some iron-on bonding to that and then you can still always stitch over the top of it but it really does keep that hem nice and stable especially for beginner sewers if you don't trust yourself pinning and sewing that way think about using a uh, yeah a fusible bonding hem uh, tape you can have 
uh, a few rolls sort of hanging around the drawer and they're really easy to grab them. They, you do tend to go through them very fast, um, but I have bought them before places like eBay and different sewing stores as well. So very handy stuff to have in the stash. Now I've just recently bought another one of these wax, paraffin waxes. I bought the uh, Merchant and Mills beeswax. It's fantastic if you're doing some hand sewing and you're wanting to run your thread through your wax. You basically hold the thread and run it through and the wax will give that um, thread a nice stability. It makes it really easy to sew and to thread through the needle. Um, this is just another variety of hemline one, the paraffin wax. Really makes all the difference in just sewing things on like buttons. Um, just you'll find that the thread won't tangle and knot as much when you're using wax. So I can highly recommend having some of that in the stash. Any variety works really well. But yeah, definitely if you have that nice long length of thread and it knots up, um, the beeswax or the paraffin wax will really help that. Pin cushions. I love my little Japanese um, pin cushion. This is a favorite of mine. Um, it's I think I bought it from Fibersmith. Fantastic little uh little pin cushion, one of my favorites. And also a magnetic pin cushion, of course. You can't go past a good magnetic cushion. That will really save you losing all your pins. Um, but I like still like to use both. Sometimes I like to have those pins upright, ready to grab. But they have saved so many pins going missing, having that magnetic pin cushion. Very inexpensive. I think you can get these just about any sewing store as well. So they're my favorites too. Talking about pins too, I love the glass top or plastic top um, ball heads. I also love things like your very fine delicate pins. These are the Merchant Mills gold brand for things like silk or any really fine fabric. Um, definitely you need to have some of these in the stash because they do make all the difference when you've got a really nice little sharp delicate pin to your beautiful delicate fabrics. Uh, I don't use them a lot these ones but they are great to reach for when I'm sewing with um, Things like silk, really fine fabrics. Um, yeah, definitely have some of those there for your intricate, beautiful, delicate things. I love my French Curve um, ruler as well. They've got the great uh, straight side and they've got a beautiful curved round a bit for doing things like when you're grading um, in between pattern sizes or even if you're drafting patterns yourself. Also the Simflex expanding sewing gauge. Everyone knows how great these are. They've been around for a very, very long time, but you can use them for things like spacing out buttons. They're great even for shearing. If you're doing rows of shearing, you want to get that spacing exactly right. Uh, they, look, they've got so many uses. They're even great for using for doing things like pleats, knife pleats, box pleats. You really uh, can't go wrong. It's got it's such a handy little device to have and I don't know why it took me so long to get one in the first place but I like to keep it in the packet because it does have great little instructions and great tips and hints there for what you can use it for so definitely think about getting one of those. Now a lot of people will go and buy special paperweights things like your big washers that you can buy from hardware stores. I've got some old tiles that we had when we first built the house and I find these work really really well as well so if you've got some old tiles that you want to gather up um, they will be enough weight to hold down the fabric too. Um, but yeah paperweights there's so many different things people use for paperweights but yeah personally for me these old tiles will work a treat. You just have to make sure that you don't put on anything too delicate because it can be a little bit rough on that outer side but a lot of people will put uh, fabric, uh, wrap them in fabric um, just to keep them nice and um, not to destroy any beautiful fabrics too. So the tiles and things like washers work really well. Another thing I love too is these velour or velvet coat hangers because they will stop things slipping. I've replaced all my plastic hangers with these really good for little hangers you can see things like tank tops they don't slip off they really grip so definitely think about getting yourself some of these hangers now sewing books or sewing bible sewing guides i love the barbara amodi so the garment making book of knowledge this has been such a great book to refer to. Now, if you've ever listened to the podcasts of the Clothes Making Mavens, Barbara has a regular segment on there where she'll talk about just things to do with sewing on her life and experiences sewing. She's taught in many schools. She's also taught in Australia. She's from Canada, but she's taught in Australia back in the 80s, I think it was. She talks about a lot of different experiences there. But I love her take and her humor and just her the way she chats about sewing. It's really easy to relate to. 
it kind of makes it less daunting, a bit more fun, and she will really pick apart things that you, things that you thought, thought about sewing over the years and the old-fashioned methods, and she'll give you her own kind of methods and ways of doing things. So she makes it a lot less scary because of the way she wrote the book. The humour in it is fantastic. She'll also take you through things like choosing and cutting fabrics. She'll talk, talk you through all the different types of fabrics and what fabrics are, where they've originated from, um, you know what they're made from, where they where they're derived from. Uh, I think that's a really good thing, good way to start. If you can um, learn about fabrics, it's one of my top tips. It will help you on your sewing journey so much. Um, and she does explain all that. And she also talks about altering patterns to get it to fit your body. She also goes through a lot of the sewing jargon at the back. So things that you might see on a pattern and not really know what those words mean or what the terms are, she will let you know exactly. Like, for example, notch. A little triangular shape often seen along the cutting lines of patterns used to match pieces during construction. Um, yeah, so just things like that that you might, may have seen words. If you're a beginner and you don't know a lot about sewing, that kind of thing can just take all the mystery out of getting a sewing pattern and um, trying to pick it apart. But I love uh, she's put her different types of pattern things she likes to wear, um, just yeah, her different experiences in life. So I will link that book below as well. So if you're interested in, um, in a good sewing book and a bit of a laugh, you'll love Barbara's book. I just think it's funny because she says um, everything your mother would tell you about sewing if your mother could sew. So don't always assume everyone's mums can sew because some mums don't sew. And a lot of people now are realising they are in a generation that their parents were not taught to sew or didn't sew and they've had to really teach themselves. So um, I think if you've got someone that has sewn and can teach you, you're very, very lucky, but not everyone has that um, has that person in their life so yeah Barbara can be there for you to refer to so I love that book so I hope you've enjoyed that as I say every link for those patterns is below I'll try and make sure I remember every single thing to link under there because I think things like that are really important things that I know have worked for me and of course you don't need to have everything at once I think um, the, a lot of these things are really inexpensive. Instead of going out and buying the fanciest sewing machine in the world when you first start, I think you're much better off investing in a few good sewing tools and maybe start off with a basic sewing machine, a good work, workhorse style machine to get you through and maybe then go and splurge on a few good little sewing gadgets because they're the things that will make or break you sometimes uh, if things can make the job a bit easier with sewing a garment. The tools will be there for you and they're easily replaceable too. If they're not, you know, if they don't last forever, they're not going to break the bank to replace. So, uh, yeah, they're all the things that I've loved using and I wish that I had have um, bought a lot earlier in my sewing journey. But you don't, you, you know, you live and learn and a lot of this is from experience and sewing over the years and seeing what other people have used. So I'd love to hear about your favourite sewing gadget. If there's something that you love using or uh, maybe an item that you've purchased that you've loved, I'd love to hear about it. Please write that in the comments below. Share it with everyone out there because that's how we learn from sharing word of mouth and it can make our sewing job a lot easier a lot more enjoyable. So take care. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, you know what to do. Hit that little bell as well and you'll be notified when my newest episodes are coming out. So I will be with you very shortly for a new episode. See you soon. Bye for now.